What is up guys? Welcome back to Return Refuge Farm. You all notice something different out in front of our house? Jeremiah took the pergola down. He put that up when we had the garden out here. And then we moved the garden out when we finished our big garden. And it's just been here and we've played around with what we're gonna do with it. But he he shot a video that should be up sometime soon. I don't know when. Um, because he wanted to repurpose some of the materials for the goat barn project. He got the design put together and like got all of the materials together if you're sitting out there it's been raining the last two days so his plan is to start working on that as soon as we have a nice day of weather it'll be at the beginning of this week i want to show you all something before we load up in the truck for a pretty exciting little errand which is going to make that goat barn super necessary we got a lot of rain the last couple days Yesterday it literally rained just the entire day steadily. And over here are the swells that we put in just this week. Um, I wanna show you guys this because this is these things in action. These two are long row swells. These are gonna be um, blackberries and raspberries. And then in these horseshoe swells, or fish scale swells, they're often called. Uh, these are gonna be blueberry plants. So there will be like blueberry, blueberry, blueberry. Each one of these will have three plants in it. I think we're gonna go with, I think it's gonna be high bush. I can't remember if it's a high bush or rabbit eye. I've got the list. But as you can see here, it has not rained since the wee hours this morning. And all of these things have got nice collections of water in them. So this, is why we build these things. So this is a kind of sloped space here. We wanted to put the berries in and on a sloped space, obviously water moves down those pretty quickly. So this is just a cliff note to this. I feel like maybe I make a, may make a podcast about this, kind of really talking in depth about the permaculture idea of like viewing everything as a resource. When rain falls on your property, like obviously we cannot control the rain we don't own the rain but for the brief period of time that it is on our property falling on it moving through it moving across it or collected on it we then do have access to that rain as a resource so i live in a place that's very hot and by doing swells on our downhill planting spaces we can slow that rain down and make it stay on our property longer giving us more access to that rain as a resource so that's what these are for because we have these big piles of mulch um, it's soil and then mulch on top that's going to really trap in that water so it's going to sit in the swell but give the horseshoe and the plants plenty of time to soak it in. And then of course it's gonna continue evaporating and then slowly move through the earth as groundwater. But it just gives us more access to it. So this makes much more resilient spaces for plants that grow without intervention from us. Um, with these, we're a whole lot less likely to have to irrigate this or water it. Um, it's, but, you know, maybe we'll have to water it on the initial onset, but there's a very good chance that with this setup, we won't have to water it much at all once the plants are established. We're getting ready to go, but Maya was setting hay out. I think the last video that I posted where he was putting hay out was also a Saturday that we typically do this on Saturdays and then once in between. Gaby. So while I wait for Maya to put this hay bale out, I figured I would catch you guys up on my goat situation. I actually just did a video earlier this week and posted it, kind of talking about where we were on the goats and there's been more development. So back when I decided I wanted goats in the fall, I connected with a friend through their a friend that they had. This guy was gonna be buying some goats in February from a man down in the low country, so a couple hours away from here, and he had gone and checked out the herd and all that. And basically, I was gonna have the opportunity to, to get through those goats. They were Nubians. And I just felt really settled in waiting. Uh, we weren't really ready going into the winter. I was just like, yeah, we'll wait till spring to do this. And I did have kind of a loose, like, hold on that because I didn't put any deposits down. You know, the guy that I was talking to is very trustworthy, so I, I felt pretty confident that it could go through, but obviously 
anything can happen when you're planning on something regarding animals months in advance and when there's not any money uh, put into it we've just been like loosely planning on getting ready for the goats in February and I was just like well I'm not ready anyway well I found out this weekend that I mean it's just extremely tragic but um, the goats in question that I was going to be purchasing actually all passed away so um, apparently I mean it's just de devastating for the individual who was keeping the goats I I am mildly disappointed but obviously this really isn't my loss so it's okay you know there are other goats and I mean I don't even feel inconvenienced by it because we weren't ready anyway However, um, apparently they had all cap or they had all kitted and um, and got ketosis, which is milk fever. We lost one goat to milk fever. Actually, the first goat I ever lost named Delilah. We lost her to milk fever. I know that that can have to do with a lot of different things, namely diet and different things like that. But it is way more common to deal with ketosis in really high producing animals. And one thing I did know about those goats that I was going to get was that they were like milk star very high producing lines so it's very sad and tragic um so when i found out i kind of started loosely looking again i'm gonna share some information separately about like what i'm looking for when i'm search shopping for goats but uh a local guy posted in one of the groups i'm in i'm in a facebook group that is basically like an animal discussion group where people sell animals that you're not I guess you're not really supposed to sell animals on Facebook, but so I saw this post. I, I commented and, and messaged this guy and he got right back to me. So we're actually getting ready to go out to his farm now and take a look at what he's got. I actually have not seen any photos of the goats in question because I'm less concerned about how they look than I am about how they've been cared for. So these animals are well cared for. They're registered. I won't keep up with the registration. Most likely I'm not really looking for that. Maybe I will, I don't know. It depends on what buck I end up getting. I may end up doing registration because I'm not trying to keep a lot of kids. So I'll be able to make more money selling them if I keep up with the registration. Paperwork is not my strong suit. So I try to be realistic with myself, uh, but these goats are very healthy. They've been handled very well by a person who knows what they're doing. And the guy that I've been chatting with that has them for sale is part of our local community. So I, I prefer when possible to purchase animals from people I have some measure of connection with. Um, whether it's somebody that I connect with because they're a viewer of our channel or someone who's in my local community. Simply because I just feel more confident in the outcome of the purchase when there's just that sense of accountability of like, it's not anonymous. And while it's best to ask a bunch of questions and obviously things can still go sideways within any sort of a transaction, um, I just feel more confident when a person's kind of established in a space that they're not going to like, you know, pull a fast one. Maya was in the middle of finishing farm chores, which she did a little later today because it was raining earlier. she comes big mama so he said we're gonna do it after we come back from the goats but he, we got to get some fresh straw out here and give it to her because she had a bunch in her barn but she drug it all out and trampled it and we just got to keep it around I, she doesn't look like insanely close to farrowing to me like she hasn't she hasn't got her milk in yet but um you know just on the off chance we want to keep it out here or she will be fine if she does give birth. Y'all ever understand where the term eats like a pig comes from? <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Some good snackies there. Her, her feed is soaked in milk today just because Friday's is cream pulling day. Um, which is that we take any of the milk from the beginning of the week and we pull the cream off and then the skim comes out to the pig. And we'll soak the chicken feet in and stuff too. So, um, 
on Saturdays she gets her special meal for the week. So this morning when I started chatting with this guy about these goats, of course we, I mean, had the initial deal worked out, we would have been bringing them home like this week also. Um, but I started chatting with the guy and I told my, I was like, you do realize that if I say yes to these goats, we're going to have to go get them. And then we're going to have like a week or two of limbo where the barn's not built and we have goats, which is something that we really <laughs> tried to avoid in our maturity because we did a lot of that in our immaturity. And he's like, yeah, it's fine. And we talked about what we will do because obviously if we didn't have a solution, we couldn't say yes. But we're going to put, we have a double stall that's 24 feet. It's two 12 foot stalls combined in the barn. And we're going to put them in there, which I would probably have done anyway, even if we had our goat barn, just because with brand new animals that I need to milk. Oh, Holly. Almost jumped right out of here. <laughs> with brand new animals that we need to milk, um, we don't. I don't want to just let them open into a big open pen and then try to coerce them to come near me. So anytime I bring in a new animal like that, I want to keep them in a confined space so that I can handle them, give them treats, woo them, um, and, and make sure that they understand that I'm friendly and that they want to be close to me so that when I do turn them out in a large space, you know, I'm not having to chase them all around and deal with that. So, um, you know, Maya pointed that out, like, it's fine and keep him in the barn for now. And he's already got everything lined up to start the project. They still have some. Yep. Hello. <laughs> hey there, cuties. Man, when you move them to fresh grass, they go running. But the, the hay, they're like, meh. Yeah, Listen, hay, but... did you hear that? Meh. Meh. Hey. Meh. <laughs> no. Alright, he's gonna go and hook up the trailer. Look! Nice! Asparagus is gonna be on the menu. So far we've only had a few stalks and I've just broke them off and ate them raw. But there's another one two, three, four in this bed. So it's currently just on the menu for one, but soon we'll all be eating asparagus. I do not expect it to be very sunny at all today, but I'm gonna go ahead and open this just in case the sun does come out. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Now that all the seedlings are up, it's unfortunate, but one too hot day or one too cold night can just completely zap them all. Hmm. Well, this happened yesterday. My first peppers came up yesterday. It's pretty exciting. The tomatoes are really starting to fill out. Oh, this is new. Brand new artichoke babies. Happy birthday, little guys. All right. Fans are on, so I can rest assured that that's fine. Hmm. This is different. With the new concrete path, this little corner is holding water which may not even be an issue at all when it starts getting hot and all these plants start growing, but I do need to keep an eye on that. I knew that putting concrete in here, there was a very good chance that it might change the way that the drainage worked, but if that's the worst of it, that's not so bad. I know I'm partial to today because I'm excited about goats, but this is a glorious morning on the farm. Everything after a storm is just so lush and alive and lovely it's very exciting hey you ready to be a goat farmer again yeah. ben told me last night what are you gonna do uh milk milk the goats with me i'm excited for that hey you can hang out here with dad i'm gonna go get your brothers if you go back to like way throwback roots and refuge you can see baby ben who was at the time about three and he would come out every single time I went to milk the goats and he would milk the goats with me. And with the cows, like we have our system, like our cows came from, some of them came from like 4-H programs and Helen came from a commercial dairy up somewhere in like Vermont area. And they don't have large teats. So Hope can be hand milked, but the others, it's not 
you can, it just takes a really, really long time. Their teeth are small, um, which is what commercial dairies breed for. They have so many other benefits that it was worth it to get those cows, but you have to pretty much use the machine on them, especially since we have multiples. And that was one of the things of wanting to get back into goats is like keeping it small, only having a few, being able to hand milk. And the kids are really excited. They're looking forward to being able to, you know, help me out with milking the way they used to. I almost was hesitant to vlog this because I haven't even seen these animals and like there's a very good chance I'm gonna go there and be like, yeah, these, these ain't it. I don't think so. And talking to this guy, I think that they're gonna be really solid, but I don't wanna bring home problem animals. Um, and I don't think that's the case, given the information I've been given. I don't think we're wasting our Saturday afternoon, but I'm gonna vlog it just in case. We'll see. I don't know what they look like. I know they're Nubians, which is what I wanted to know. All right, we just got here. Y'all ready to go up there? It's very a big confidence builder when you're meeting somebody from the internet to buy animals from them and you pull up in their place is very well well managed. <laughs> like definitely good. We like what we see. We're not gonna take a camera up here because like we don't know this person. We're not trying to film their property. We'll catch up with you guys on the other side. Do you think they'll stop because you're there? Alright guys, what just happened? Got the goats. We got the goats. Maya. I wanna explain. Just about happened. more goats than she initially intended. <laughs> not more goats. More goat. more goat. One more goat that I initially intended. I'll explain what we got. Uh, we got three mamas, and then we got a little button. And he has extra long ears. Yeah. I forget the well, number Nub for his ears. Nubians do have extra long ears. And we really he had a buck. He does all registered goats. He shows them. A whole bunch of goat kids, like a lot. He has like hundreds of goats, and he shows. Um, and he had a buck, buckling, that is on a bottle right now and will be for a handful more weeks. He was born a couple months ago and, um, he's got a little weird flip in his ear and which makes him disqualified from being shown. Um, and so he offered to him, like, because I was buying the others for really cheap. So I went ahead and got him. Oh, because... We're gonna need a buck and he'll be old enough to breed in the fall, but he's small enough now that he can go in with the mamas and I don't have to build another pen right now. So it is an eventual solution to a problem that will save us time having to search for a healthy, clean buck later. All right. Hey. <laughs> All right, we're home. I'm going to, Jeremiah's dropping the trailer, we're gonna walk him through to the barn. Look at these nosies, seeing the trailer pull up. Gotta keep an eye on things, all the horses. They're so nosy, <laughs> they're, all, <laughs> they're all watching. Gabriel, you're back, you're about to be back on duty, sir. You ready for a job? So since we rehomed all of our goats, Gabriel has been out in the pasture and he keeps he kind of keeps close to the alpacas typically Since we let the turkeys out He's kind of hovered around them because I think he just knows they're the most vulnerable animal out there And obviously the cows or horses do not need a guardian dog and they do not like him being underfoot um, so he steers clear of them, but we once we get the goat pen set up over in the woods gabriel is actually going to move out there and stay in with the goats because they'll be kind of on the perimeter of the property and just because there's woods that backs up to that i want to make sure he's in there with them because they are more vulnerable and i don't expect there to be any issues we actually have the pigs on the other side of the goats so there's an there's more deterrence However, I mean, he'll be happy too because he's gonna have his job back of watching over goats. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. This is a big deal. I don't think I realized how big of a deal it was till I, till I got him. Got him back. Thank you, sir. I'm gonna add some straw in here.
Looks good. We were just talking about how this might be too tall for the little baby. Probably have to put a little bucket over here for him to be able to access. Alright. Alright, so we've got hay for them to eat, plenty of bedding, water, a big thing because with three does and milk they're going to go through quite a lot and then the shorter one so that the baby can reach it. I actually have to run to the feed store and grab a couple ba bags of 18% dairy goat ration. We already have alfalfa pellets, which we'll mix a little bit of that in with them. And then we usually do a little bit of black oil sunflower seeds in as well. So we'll mix that together. Well, we're about to unload these girls, which you guys are going to see on the next video. And I will introduce them to you officially then. And I may cry a little bit. So <laughs> thank you guys for hanging out with us on this very exciting day. Tune in for the next video where you get to meet my new goatee girls. I bless you. Until next time.